Let's bring in Daoud Khutab, a journalist and Middle East analyst. And he joins us now from Amman. Thank you so much for joining us on the program once again. Now, the last time we spoke, you said you doubt the annexation process will begin today, given uh, the comments Benny Gantz has made. Are your thoughts still the same? Yes, well, I, I think I've been vindicated. I've argued that uh, the Israelis uh, bluster and talk about annexation does not uh, bode well, and the international community for the first time has stood up to its own principles of making and making sure that countries who are powerful don't take the land over their neighbors, because otherwise it's going to become a kangaroo situation where every country is unhappy with its borders, will take over the borders of their neighbors. And that is not a way to, to move forward. So I argued in my last talk to you and others that Israel will not annex in the end because they're trying, I think Netanyahu did this for election purposes. Um, he's still trying to get the Americans to support him, which is very unusual. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're on, we're on the verge of a colonial situation where the occupiers and a country that has nothing to do with Palestine, the U.S., are deciding the future of Palestinians. That's totally racist and colonial at the same time. Right. Now, you mentioned uh, U.S. support. Now, Benny Gantz is saying the July 1st deadline isn't sacred nor urgent to go through with the annexation plan. But with the upcoming U.S. presidential elections, is Netanyahu wanting to go through annexing occupied territory a strategic move, given the uh, opposing stance Trump and Biden have on this issue? Well, it's actually very ironic because, um, on the one hand, Netanyahu uh, uh, likes uh, Trump and is happy with Trump, but at the same time, he doesn't trust that Trump will win the elections. And so he wants to do the uh, annexation before the elections because, and it's a, it's a mm -hmm. sign that he doesn't believe that his friend will win the elections. Uh, but regardless of who wins the elections, uh, Palestinian land is for Palestinians not for the Israelis, not for the Americans, and not for anybody else to decide their future. The problem is the unilateralism of this. If the Israelis want to negotiate, they are more than welcome to negotiate based on international law. But to uh, unilaterally take somebody else's land is totally unacceptable. Well, talking about negotiations, where does this annexation plan put the possibility of a two-state solution and some sort of peace between Israelis and Palestinians? It, it, it destroys it. I mean, the, everybody understands that to solve the uh, Palestinian-Israeli conflict, you have two choices. Either you share the land or you share the power. So Palestinians have accepted to share the land to say, we will take a mm -hmm. compromise on our uh, you know, desire of having Palestine all over and to take a small part of Palestine as our state. And now that this issue is being um, uh, undermined by the Israelis, I think Palestinians more and more are going to say, OK, you don't want to share the land. Let's share the power. Give us equal rights. And as your uh, uh, interview with the South African, if they don't, then there will be an apartheid situation. And that's a, a war crime, mm -hmm. according to international law. Now, Daoud, uh, as we know, protesters and demonstrators have deemed today as the day of rage. And I read an article about this farmer who explained his story. and expressed how scared he is if this annexation plan goes through because all his livelihood is going to be destroyed. What's going to happen to these people if indeed the annexation does go through? I know you think that it's not going to go through, but let, let's just look at the facts that we have now and assume that we will expect them to go through with this annexation. Yeah, well, I made an analysis. I, I'm not... Uh saying that it will not go through. Uh, I was uh, trying to calculate the pluses and the minuses, even from the Israeli side, mm -hmm. and they, they came up, I came up with that analysis. But eventually, yes, Israel wants to annex. They're just waiting for the right time. And this time is not the one. But we need to stop this annexation because, as you said, it's going to hurt people's lives and livelihoods. And uh, it destroys the chance for peace. And this is something that is not acceptable. My problem is that we are now diverted from the issue of ending the occupation. And all we care about is ending the annexation. We are not only interested in ending the annexation. What is needed is to end the illegal and unacceptable 53-year-old annexation. That's what we really need to work on. All right, Daoud Khutab, thank you so much for joining us on the program once again. We really appreciate it.